Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and today it's going to be fun one spoiling the day that we have been leading up to. And so we're finally going to the art of conference that is taking place today. Um, I'm going to leave it in about an hour. So I just just remembered that it's because I have all my goodies ready. I'm like, how am I going to show my book? Because I'm talking about my book and I'm like, this is where the proof copy comes in, so don't think I remembered because otherwise I'm, I don't know how I'm going to show up, <laughs> you know, talking about my book, so it's a good thing I have my proof copy. And so, yeah, it's, I think it's going to be fun. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to stay there for the whole day just because I also have other things to do after the conference. Um, you know, that involves book picking up and all that stuff, but um, I do want to go to one uh, lesson, seminar, I guess you want to call it, uh, it's for all the call decks and tarot cards, um, and it honestly sounds really interesting, and I, I have seen that method for people to use how, like, their planning for books, so, I kind of want to check it out, want to see what's it about, uh, I personally never used that method, so I think it'd be fun just to see how it is and all that. And so, yeah, um, otherwise than that, I will see you guys in an hour, I'll be there, and yeah, it's gonna be a fun day today, so, let's go. <laughs> So I actually finished my author reading. I thought it went well. Um, I am in a different part of the section. <laughs> There's like a whole story to it, which I will talk about later. I am going to this building right across here. So yeah, it's, I think it'll be fun. I'm trying to go to my next section if I can make it on time. If this traffic light would turn green for me. But yeah, I have actually bought some books here and this, you know, just to support authors. I also gave away some copies of myself. So yeah, I think it'll be fun, but um, I will see you guys in the other building. Working on the third in the trilogy, which is an espionage thriller with a supernatural twist set in Prague. Uh, when I'm not behind the computer, you can find me roller skating, skiing, or traveling with the world, and of course, reading oracle cards. I love to incorporate them into my life weekly, and they've just been. Uh, an amazing tool uh, also in my writing. So my hope today is to get you super comfortable, and which I feel like a lot of you will already be comfortable with the Oracle card or tarot, but uh, show you a way to incorporate the card into your writing and just to help guide you out of that writer's block when you're getting stuck. This is an interactive session, so we'll be doing a 10 minute uh, writing session at the end. And then we'll do some QA and I hope to answer any questions that you may have. Oh, what am I going to do about this? And I decided to take a look and them run through the presentation. And while I was choosing a card, in the same way I will choose a card later, I got a message for me. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is so blatantly obvious, but not what I was intending. So do clear your cards every single time. And then after they're cleared, set your intention, which is. What do my characters need to know right now? Or what do I need to know right now? Or what does my story need to know right now? What does my story need right now? And you shuffle your cards and when it feels right, just pick one or two, whatever feels right to you. I personally like when they fall out because to me that's the message that wants to come through the most strongly. And um, oh, yeah, that's my favorite. So once you get your cards, you go to your guidebook, interpret and then pick out from the from the description all the cool things that can maybe guide your story. And that ends up being the direction you end up exploring. So you start writing and you, you just go for that.
when I... <clears throat> so how can one power work for all of us today? I so know it's a pretty cool session. I'm probably going to just hit an art show. And honestly, <laughs> so I still have the copies that I want to give out to other people, but I don't really know what happened there. I don't know, I think maybe the whole station could have looked a little, little bit better. But let's go see this in an art show. It is so cool. Okay, you guys, so I'm actually heading home. Um, it was fun, and I felt like the organization could have been a little bit better just because I was just sure where to put my books, but it was fun. Um, it was still a great time, but um, yeah, so I am going to give you guys a little goodies and home and, and some books that I bought. But yeah, I also have leftovers books that I can just do giveaways and all that fun stuff. So I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay, you guys, so I'm back and it's really hot outside, so that's all good. I think I had a pretty much successful day today, even though the whole confusing part about the copies where I can put it, that was kind of all over the place, I feel like. So I do have leftovers, and I think I'm just going to do a little giveaway on my Instagram, so if you guys want to join the giveaway, I don't have, like, the exact date and all that. Um, it will be a person on my social media at, on Instagram, and in Katie58. So watch out for the post. Um, I get I haven't gotten all the details figured out, and it's kind of like a last minute thing. So I'm like, oh, that could be a good idea. So yeah, just watch out for that post. Um, I will also sh share it here on YouTube as well, so that you're not missing out either. But um, I think you get about eight copies, seven. Something like that. So I didn't give out too much, but that's okay. Um, even little copies will help spread the word out. So hopefully they will share it on social media. <laughs> but let's get into my goodies, because we do have some goodies. Um, but yeah. Okay, so starting off from the main event itself, it is when we collides, we have like this beautiful pin with all the dragons. And it's glowy. <laughs> so it's a really nice pin. It's actually my first pin. I don't really collect pins, but it is really nice. So, yay! Also, I just got like these business cards, I assume. So, for like the next book or the first book. I have no idea what any of these books are, but they just look interesting. So, Wineling. And then we have Last of the Gifted. And then we have. Well, I can't read that. Last of the Gifted Water. What a sight, as it says on the back, which I'll show you. And then this is what it says about the book. It is the book two. And then, oh yeah. So, the water sight is book two, and spirit sight is book one. I guess I got the first one. <laughs> we will see. And then these are just bookmarks, the house filler. Which, oh, this is really cool. So it's like... Family saga is set in China during the most tumultuous time of the 20th century, including the Japanese invasion, the Civil War, and the Communist takeover. Man, why do I find myself reading war books? I know I'm gonna cry. Uh, <laughs> so speaking of the first book, here we go, it's Spirit Sight. So this is what it is. In 
can just pause and scream and read it. And then we got some more bookmarks, science fiction on the razor's edge. It looks pretty cool. And this is the author's website should you be interested in the book. So here's another one. I'm guessing this is the first book. Yeah, Book Zero of the Dragon Descendant series. And again, we have the website should you be interested. If you're wondering why I'm shaking, I carry two bags full of books. Oh my god, I thought my shoulders were gonna fall out. <laughs> so yeah, so this is the book one of the Dragon Descendant series. Here we go. Again, author's um, website should you be interested. And then again, be main event, one world's collide. So I had fun. I did join the one session as you guys saw. Um, it was pretty interesting to see how to use the Oracle cards as for your story. I don't think I will be using that method, but it was just inter interesting to see because I have been hearing a lot about it. So, you know, kind of like to see like, oh, how you use it and all that. So, I also have this Volume 2 pen from One World's Collide. It's a pretty pen. So, yeah. Nice click. <laughs> So I now have bookmarks, I cannot have an excuse as to why I don't have bookmarks, I've been using receipts, no joke, <laughs> I've never been using receipts as bookmarks, um, but now I have actual ones, so good job. <laughs> but let's get on with the goodies. So this, I think the section that I was at was just mostly romance, that's how the person said, um, but that there are like other books as well, so it's just strictly romance um but yeah so i have the land of the dragon by stephen costin khan it kind of reminds me of avatar the last Airbender, sort of like a, with the whole scheme and this is also a bookmark as well so yeah i actually don't know what it's about but the author who was i think he was substituting the actual author he kind of described it like Narnia kind of thing, so that's exciting. But um, yeah, so I'm a trained victim fighter, survivor, sister, and daughter of a Nazi. I am Elena Kuhn. I will not be indoctrinated by Hitler. I fight for the truth my world has forgotten and ignored, but upon escaping the country, I stumble into a whole new world, and I soon realize that war is everywhere you look. I'm assuming that's where the Narnia comes in. With nothing but the clothes on my back and five siblings in tow, I rush up on the coast of a world I had only glimpsed in books and the clouds of dreams, land of the dragon, but there's something about this new world that rings with humility, of perhaps someone. So it sounds promising, so I'm interested in reading it, so yeah. Also, Land of the Dragons, wasn't there a TV show that's like something about Land of, land of the Dragons or something? I don't think. No, it's just like that pink song. Oh my gosh. They're flying to the dragon land. Or something like that. <laughs> but anyways. So I also got another book from another section. And this is The God of the Woods by Liz Moore. When I came the interventions from my Adrian that dark summer camp, two worlds collide. Early morning, August 1975, a camp counselor discovers an empty bunk. Its occupant, Barbara Van Lawn, has gone missing. Barbara isn't just any 13-year-old. She's the daughter of the family that owns the summer camp and employs most of the region's residents, and this isn't the first time a bad loud child has disappeared. Barbara's oldest brother similarly vanished 14 years ago, never to be found. As a panicked search begins, a thrilling drama unfolds. Chasing down the layered mysteries of the Van Lau family and the blue collar community living and walking in its shadows, Moore's multi threaded story invites readers into a rich and gripping dynasty of secrets. I'm not so sure about thrilling about finding a missing person, but it only sounds interesting, so I'm excited for it. And we have to see you behind the dust jacket. Ah, that looks pretty. Ta da! And if you can see. <laughs> so yeah, so also from the same section of where I got this book, I also got these cute um, book mugs. Um, they were 20%, so I'm like, why not? So we got book notes with the rainbow stripes and then books of glitter with the cat. 
And my la last one, it's kind of funny because I've been having like an on and off wall with this book. Um, I'm like, okay, I want to read it. And I know I don't want to read it. But I ended up, the book ended up winning. So it is Heartless Hunter by Christine Ciccarelli. Enemies of Lover doesn't get more high stakes than a witch and a witch hunter falling in love. On the night, moon's life changed forever, blood red in the streets. Now in the aftermath of devastating re revolution, witches have been diminished from powerful rulers to outcasts, ruthlessly hunted due to their waning magic, and Rune must hide what she is. Spending her days pretending to be nothing more than a vapid young star of light, Moon spends her nights as the crimson moth, a rich vigilant who rescues her kind from being purged. When the rescue goes wrong, she decides to throw the witch hunters off her scent and gain the internal she desperately needs by courting the handsome Gideon Shunt. He is a notorious and unforgiving witch hunter, loyal to the revolution too late, when realizes she might be falling for him. Gideon knows that descendants and superficiality mean represents, but when he learns that Crimson Moth has been using Rune's merchant the ships, uh, ships to smuggle and renegade witches out of the Republic, he inserts himself into his social circus by pretending to court her. He soon realizes that beneath her beauty and shallow facade is someone fiercely intelligent and tender who feels like his perfect match, except what if she is the very villain he has been hunting. We're gonna be fine out. <laughs> So, let's see. Oh, okay. Ta-da, that's how it is. So yeah, this was the on and off book. They're like, oh, yeah, I should get it, I should not. Obviously, I got it. I think this is from BookTok, you know, you know, TikTok. I tend to stay away from TikTok just because I read some books from TikTok. Holy crap, where are they under those? Like, honestly, I've never seen a book so bad I can jump it. They can just be published out into the world like that. I'm like, do they not care? Like, I just feel like, like half of these authors I read, they just don't care. They're in it for the money. Like, I just feel that way. So it's kind of sad to see what the publishing world has come to. I kind of wish it was like back in the old days where it was a little bit more strict. That you have to have like an agent to be able to publish a book. But times are rolling, so I don't know. But... I don't know about this one, so I'm hoping it'll be good, otherwise I'll just give it to my friend. She likes anything romance and fantasy, or oh, she also likes romance as well, so I don't know, we will see. Also from the same section where I got the book, I got like this. I'm assuming this is like a magnet, because it has this. And it's called Fantasy Land, because I am always in there, my head is 24-7 in here. I mean Cloud 9, if you will. Yes. <laughs> and so yeah, fantasy land is pretty cool. Um, yeah. And then also from the same section, I got another book that says I'm reading. So more book books for me. I don't have any excuse as to why I'm not having one. So yeah, I mean, this is on saving. But okay, I think that finishes up this video. I had fun. Um, I definitely want to go back next year. But, oh, also, I have to tell you about this story, so, oh my gosh, I can't believe this again. Um, so, I thought the building was actually, like, the event was supposed to take that place in the building. Um, joke started me. So, what happened was I called the host, and she was like, yeah, you're actually supposed to go to another building, and like, oh, okay, and the funny thing, Oh my god, I'm gonna kick myself in the butt. The funny thing is, is like, it actually says the location in the handbook that she emailed us. Like, to all the participants who are doing author readings. Um, it was right in that handbook. I always just skim through those. Shows me a light. <laughs> um, but it's important to, uh, you know, to read. I like the handbooks that are given to you and not just la 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 you know what I mean but so yeah I still managed to make it on time I think it was about like five minutes late give or take uh, but there was someone before me so which is a good thing because yeah I don't think I would have made it on time if it was, since I think it was actually supposed to be the first to go but obviously that never happened so luckily there was another person for me <laughs> But yeah, so that was the mishap for today. I went to a completely different location and I ended up going 
16 minutes later to the actual location that was supposed to be in. It was a hotel, so that's why you, if you see in my videos, it gives you off like this hotel vibes. So it is a hotel, but um, oh, what an adventure I would say. Uh, that was what happened to my flight yesterday when I went to Edmonton. <laughs> oh my gosh. So WestJet being WestJet, like, hey, just kidding, we have changes. I'm like, oh, okay, let me see what are the changes are. So I got my updated boarding pass. Uh, my original time was 8.45 p.m., um, but the new time was 8.15. So I'm like, okay, I have another whole day. I'm just going to the mall, the West Edmonton Mall. Um, so it's all fine and dandy, and then as the evening comes along, I went to the airport because it was time. So when I got up to the, you know, those kiosk machine, I'm like, you know, scanning in my document so I can have my boarding pass printed. And then the machine's like, oh, sorry, please see the agent. I'm like, okay, maybe they just want more information. <laughs> so I went to the agent. The agent, like, scanned my passport so he can obtain whatever information he needs. And, um, <laughs> oh my god. So he said, um, yeah, you missed your flight. <laughs> Remember how I said it was 8.15? It was in the morning, not in the evening. I totally messed that up. <laughs> like, I totally switched it around. I'm like, oh crap. <laughs> so, I totally missed my flight by so many hours. So, uh, me and baby, um, I kind of started to panic, but then I just kind of slowly, you know, came back to earth because panicking won't get you nowhere, trust me, even crying. So, <laughs> in these kind of situations, you have to like step back, relax, and reassess, like the options what you have, which what I did, because honestly, crying won't honestly get you anywhere. You would just drain yourself and it would just make the situation worse. And so I did feel frustrated on myself because I double checked my passport on like the boarding pass so many times before the next day of my actual flight. I must have misread it or I was like really really tired on Friday night. I don't know what happened there but I totally misread it. So yeah, so like at first I'm like, okay, I can still catch the bus in time. Uh, the first bus actually just left, and then but the other bus comes in like 15 minutes. So I'm like, okay, I can just take that one. But then when I was calling the agent because the, it says that you have to call for reservation, nobody picked up. And um, honestly, I almost never do this, but I only do this as a last resort. So I actually took a taxi to get back home, which cost me a pretty penny. But like I was desperate because all the flights were mm, the next day, which is today. And I'm like, I can't do it. I have to be here for the conference that was today. So I'm like, I needed a flight home or however. So my honestly, my last resort was a taxi. And I almost never use taxis to get home. Um, but like, I was desperate at that point. So that was my last resort. I had to get a taxi. Luckily, it was about two, three hour drive, so it wasn't too bad, but man, was I overwhelmed. <laughs> so, yeah, and so um, double check your boarding passes, even if you feel confident. Just reread your boarding pass, it only takes five seconds to read it. So, that was my mess on Saturday night. <laughs> but, man, that's a pass the point good story, doesn't it? But okay, um, but anyways, I think I'll end up the vlog here, um, we had some giggles and all that fun stuff. I still had a great time in Edmonton, I actually talked to one of the people's guests, like the mom was there for her daughter because her daughter was also there for the author's reading, so I kind of chatted with her mom, I was like, oh yeah, I'm from Edmonton, and I told her like, oh, I was also in Edmonton last night, so it was really fun to see that, um, uh, but yeah, so... Oof, I had quite an adventurous day, <laughs> but yeah, I think I'm ready to tone it down now, I need to, yeah, um, anyways, but that's gonna be it for this vlog, um, let me know if you guys have any adventurous days, <laughs> cause I sure had, uh, but yeah, and please like, comment, subscribe, so you'll be notified every time I post, and I will see you on my next one, bye!